vital new information if you have long-term pain. Hey folks, I'm Dr. Jeff Williams with Creekstone, and today I want to teach you some new thinking that medical neuroscience research is showing us about chronic long-term pain. And it's absolutely fascinating, and anyone that you love, from young to elderly, they really need to know this stuff. So please consider hitting the share button and sending it to them. Let's help as many people as we can, okay? So let's dive in. When we think of chronic pain, we think about having pain beyond the point that it should have disappeared. I mean, think about it. Every single tissue in our body has a healing timetable. And once that timetable is reached, shouldn't the pain have gone away? Bone heals in about six to eight weeks. Same thing goes for muscle issues, six to eight weeks or so. Maybe the ligament issue, six months uh, or so, but there's a timetable. So why does it persist? Well, the fact is, chronic pain is so much bigger than that. Chronic pain is a beast, and taming it, it's a process. It's a journey. Did you realize that chronic pain costs us more than cancer, diabetes, and heart disease globally? In case you didn't catch that, it costs us all more than those huge, very serious conditions combined, all together. Indeed, you might say that chronic pain, it's a problem. It's important to understand that nerves come from the arms and the legs and everywhere else, our low back, uh, our neck, they come from these areas and they connect directly onto our central nervous system. The central nervous system is made up of the brain and the spinal cord, in case you didn't know that. When information comes in from these areas, anywhere in the body really, the brain must make decisions about how important those signals really are. And then the brain has to deal with those signals appropriately. Will the brain just squash the information as meaningless? Or will it allow the signals to go up to the higher centers and trigger pain and trigger a reaction to the pain? Depending on all of this, the brain determines whether or not to make it hurt and, if so, how badly it should hurt and what's going to be the response to that pain. Knowing this concept is very, very important. It's a key concept. The brain is what decides whether something makes you hurt. Your brain is what makes up your ongoing pain experience. The pain experience is a protection mechanism. And this process is only a small part of the overall pain experience. Chronic pain is due to several things, and as I just mentioned, the brain plays the biggest part. In fact, previous injuries suffered by a person are imprinted in the brain, and the brain uses that information when making future decisions about the triggers that, that continually come in. It uses that information when deciding if or how much one is going to hurt on a day-to-day -day basis. The brain is the one that tries to predict the future likelihood of experiencing pain, and it sets the level of sensitivity in order to minimize our risks based on what the brain thinks is likely to be happening. For example, the expectation of something being painful changes the way a person moves. Another vital concept here is that of neuroplasticity. Now, don't go anywhere. Don't go, I'm going to explain it. Without getting too difficult, this term just means that our nervous system can change in structure and in the, the way it functions as it encodes new experiences as we go through life. This means that not only can injury cause pain, but that changes in the central nervous system also play an active part in maintaining the chronic pain experience. That also means that treatment targeting the central nervous system has the potential to decrease pain and improve your function. So, is the pain in your head? Well, when we discuss these points with our patients, they sometimes think that we're trying to tell them that their pain is all in their head. And that's just not the case. What it means is that our perception of ourselves and our capabilities combine with our past pain experiences. Past pain experiences could include injury or surgery. And that information combines with what we've been told by doctors about ourselves. For example, you have the back of an 80 year old or your back is fragile and you're going to have to protect it going forward through your life. Or 
you've really messed this up. You're, you've got a messed up neck, it's out of alignment, you've got a straight neck, and we really need to work on this over the years to make sure that you don't end up crippled in 40 years. Another common one I hear from patients is, uh, my surgeon told me that it's not a question of if I'm going to have surgery eventually, it's just a question of when I'm going to have surgery and just to call them when it's time. Wow, what can we do to get surgeons to stop using that script? It's, it does way more damage than it does good. And then you have, uh, you have to factor in your beliefs about yourself, your condition, your life with pain, and your likely chances of ever being able to recover from it. So again, some of the factors that are contributing to the pain experience for a lot of folks are the actual pain at the point of injury. Let's say it's the wrist, okay? Um, the pa your past pain experiences, um, when you've hurt yourself in the past or you've had uh, surgeries in the past. The communication from previous healthcare practitioners or other outside sources. And then your own self-limiting beliefs and fears. And that's just naming a few. It's a very complicated and fascinating thing that we're talking about here. These factors can all pile up to produce what is termed an upregulated central nervous system. Some refer to it as a sensitized central nervous system. Your brain used all of these factors and takes them all into consideration to create your ongoing pain experience. And when it is sensitized, the pain experience gets amplified. This does not mean it's all in a person's head. Far from it, in fact. What it means is that your very real pain can be, and most likely is, made worse by your own central nervous system trying to protect you. This central nervous system is literally trying to reduce your risk of further pain by creating some pain. To demonstrate the fact that pain can exist in your brain as well as at the source, like a wrist or an elbow or a low back, let's briefly mention phantom limb pain. In case you're not familiar with the term phantom limb pain, it's when a person has pain and issues in a limb. So the limb is amputated, it's cut right off. Yet some of these folks still experience pain. Pain in a limb that has been cut off. It no longer is even attached to the body. It no longer exists. It got burned up in an oven somewhere. But it still hurts as if it were still there and still attached to the person's body. And that's because the pain, the pain was handled at the source, but it wasn't treated from the cognitive aspect. Now, thanks to Dr. Anthony Nicholson and Dr. Matthew Long with Clinical Development International Online Continuing Education, we can put all of this idea into a diagram and put it on paper. This image represents a simplification of the patient pain experience. The arcs here represent your body's total ability. The bold red line is the point of tissue damage, meaning that you can operate normally until you reach the tissue damage line. If you reach that line or you go beyond it, you're likely to tear ligaments, muscles, things like that. The red dotted line represents the point of pain. We reach the point of pain just before we reach the point of tissue damage. Again, this is our body using pain as a protection mechanism. Now, if you notice, there's a little bit of space where the arc extends above the tissue damage line. And that's the point where you can operate pain-free, but you are damaging tissue. And that's usually the space where one operates in when they're picking a car up off of an injured child or they're performing some superhuman feat. They're doing themselves some damage, but your body allows it. For most of us mere mortals, we're able to operate normally without a lot of pain, as A demonstrates here. We have a, an expansive range wherein we're able to live, work, and play without pain, without hurting. If we get too close to the tissue damage line, well, we hurt enough to back us off and then we continue to live, work, and play pain-free once again. When we enter the realm of chronic pain syndrome through all sorts of different influences that we've mentioned, our pain point, or our red dotted line, is moved down. We may have been told 
we're, we're eventually going to need surgery no matter what we do. We may have seen our parents deal with awful back pain and have a perception that we're going to suffer the same thing. Maybe we've had past pain experiences like some sort of prior surgery or an injury from years ago, just like I mentioned. Maybe that's still in our brain too. In this sort of scenario, your central nervous system moves that red dotted line down to protect you. It moves it down because you have subconsciously told your body that you need to be protected. And now, as B represents, you have much less space in which you can live, work, and play before you start hurting. As I mentioned before, this is a sensitized, upregulated nervous system. This is when more and more things that do not trigger pain pass through to the central nervous system and they start causing pain. They don't normally cause pain, but since your line has moved down, now they do. Now, describing this to patients that are hurting, well, this can elicit a couple of big responses. One response is that of relief. There's relief that we have helped put a name on what's going on. Relief that we provided a path that just might lead out of it someday. The other big response that we commonly get is that of irritation. Irritation because they believe that I'm telling them their pain is purely in their head. If it's all in their head, then how could they hurt so badly, right? They also think we're suggesting they're somehow crazy. And that just could not be further from the truth. There is almost always a real reason for the onset of pain. Some common reasons could be maybe arthritis that's consistently irritating and, in, and inflaming hands or wrists or elbows or whatever. Um, instability in joints, loose joints that tend to move around more than average and cause constant irritation with certain movements. You know, there are very real reasons for pain at the actual source. But the longer that pain sticks around, the more of it simultaneously begins to also live within the brain and within the overall pain experience. That is exactly what chronic pain is. We can throw all the stuff we do at the pain chiropractic, surgery, acupuncture, physical therapy, medicine, shots, pills, massage. But if it's not also treated at the same time from a cognitive aspect, the outcome may still remain disappointing. There are all kinds of ideas on how to treat centralized chronic pain. One physician with some great research and great ideas in, in his arsenal is Dr. David Hanscom, uh, MD. Dave, Dave, Dr. David Hanscom is a spinal surgeon from Washington State. He's a medical doctor. He has authored a book called Back in Control. And Dr. Hanscom is actually a spinal surgeon who just happens to be on the warpath against spinal surgery. Or to be more specific, he's against surgery for the wrong candidates. Uh, he's very clear that too many back surgeries are happening. He states that so many of them are failures because the patient was not a good candidate for the surgery in the first place. He shares a pretty shocking statistic as an example. He cites research showing that when a chronic pain sufferer undergoes surgery and everything goes beautifully, the patient will still experience chronic pain at the new site of surgery in 60% of the cases. Wow, that is a 60% failure rate for supposedly successful surgeries. That is a sensitized central nervous system right there, folks. He also has a website we recommend often, and the website is backincontrol.com. This is where he provides uh, more clarification and therapy ideas. Some ideas are as simple as getting adequate sleep, creative writing, or what he's termed active meditation. In addition to Dr. Hanscom's book, we typically recommend the patient undergo a broad treatment management strategy, multimodal, lots of things going on, all with the focus of helping the patient get out of pain. Now, this broad management strategy typically includes spinal manipulative therapy that, that chiropractors are known for. Broad management could also include targeted exercise regimens, regimens urging the patient to move in ways that they've not moved in some time. As they build confidence in these new movements, their pain point, the red dotted line, begins to rise back up to normal, and the patient begins to have more confidence going forward. That gives them more space to live, work, and play 
before pain gets triggered. Now, let's talk about hurt versus harm. It is always important for the patient to remember the difference between hurt and harm. If an exercise or an activity hurts, yet clearly shows improvement and can be done, well, it's likely worth continuing. Remember, movement is healing. When a person has something as serious as a knee replacement or a, um, or a C-section, well, they've got them walk in the halls the very next day because movement is healing. If an exercise or activity is, it feels harmful, well, it should either be modified or avoided completely. Um, now, not understanding this concept, it leads to what we call fear avoidance behavior. That's when we begin avoiding activities because we're afraid they're going to hurt. Activities that we love to do, activities that, that give us enjoyment through our day and through our lives, activities that feed our soul, and then we start avoiding them because we're afraid it's going to hurt. Well, it's important to understand that hurt does not equal harm. Again, movement is healing, so continue to move even when it hurts, as long as it does not feel harmful. When we slip into fear avoidance behavior, we begin to decondition in as little as only seven days. But it takes much longer than that to recondition. It's not very fair. I'll be the first to admit it, but it's true. Again, movement is healing, not only for the body, but also for the mind. It's important for your confidence to be moving. So broad management that we mentioned earlier may also include medical treatment, strengthening, acupuncture, massage, proprioceptive rehab, balance rehab, as well as cognitive behavioral therapy, treating it from the, from the cognitive aspect. Chronic pain syndrome is a beast and the pathways in the nervous system laid down, they're, they're permanent. But that means there will always be work to do in order to stay above the pain and keep the red dotted line uh, from being down here to up here. But with a toolbox of techniques that can help, there is hope and there is a way to begin climbing back out of the hole. There are all kinds of ways to approach treating chronic pain. I've just laid out some of them, but there are also nutritional concerns. They're showing that um, diets that are not inflammatory, healthy diets help with chronic pain. Uh, chronic pain and depression are very closely linked to each other, and that could be another avenue of, of attacking chronic pain. But the point is, we are helping people of our area like never before. We're getting them closer to a pain-free life. We're getting them on the road to avoiding surgery, getting off of pain medication, getting better sleep and taking control of their own lives without the need for a bunch of healthcare practitioners. We're teaching them to self-manage at home. And that's why it's so important to share this video, folks. I would appreciate your help. We want to take care of as many as we can, whether that's in here or whether they're on their own uh, researching this information and taking, uh, taking steps on their own at home. It doesn't matter. They need to know the information. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe, comment, and share. If you're watching on Facebook, like, comment, and share with your network, please. I'd love to hear what you think about this fascinating topic. I'm, uh, I'm enthralled by it. If you're from the Amarillo area, uh, or you're going to be passing through and you need to be seen, call us. Let's get you on the schedule. Again, I'm Dr. Jeff Williams with Creekstone. Until next week, I'd love to help you. Take care. We'll see you then.